Today we're going to cover the Caesar cipher, which is one of the most easiest encryptions that you can do. And we're going to use the fourth programming language, Swiftforth. Caesar cipher has a few basics. First thing you need to know is that you're just shifting letters. You can shift them one, two, or three times. And usually uh, what we'll be doing in this one is shifting them three times to the right. Second thing you need to know is that both parties are aware of how many places to shift. And it's the simplest form of encryption dating back to Caesar when he would send these messages, encrypted messages to his military. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to use this table of ASCII printable characters. And if you look in the red box, you can see that A corresponds to the digit 97, B corresponds to 98, C 99, and so forth. So this is kind of what your computer uses whenever you hit the letter or hit the A key on your keyboard. Your computer is actually interpreting that as the number 97. So to encrypt the message cat, all we need to do is, in this case, we're shifting uh, three to the right. So all we need to do is add three. And you can see that cat is 99, starts with C, A, and T. So our first letter is C, 99 plus 3 is going to be F. And A plus 3, or 97 plus 3, is going to be 100. And our last letter is going to be T, which is 116 plus 3 is 119. So that's pretty much how you do this, is you just add three. Now if we agreed to shift the letters four, we would get a different result. So that's why you have to talk with your other, uh, your friend, or whoever you're sending this message to, you have to agree upon how many you're going to shift it over to. Here we have the alphabet A through Z, and you can see that A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, C corresponds to F, and so on. So we're, we're doing, we're shifting three times over, or we're shifting three over. So you can see that, you know, if we add 97 plus 3, we get 100. And this is kind of, this works all the way up until we get to about the end. And you'll see that we have to do something a little different. You'll see that at the end, where we have ABC, we have to subtract 23. Because we have to use, you know, the on, on the bottom, we have to use the whole alphabet. So... That's kind of the only tricky thing we have to look out for. And uh, I'll show you how to program this in fourth. And it's, it's pretty easy once you, once you see it in action. So here's some test messages. Hi will translate into KL. Hello will translate into KHOOR. Attack at dawn is, is that. And we already did cat. I'm going to show you how this program works. First of all, I've created a word called cipher out. And whenever I hit enter, it's expecting input from the keyboard. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to do a test encryption. We're just going to encrypt the word hi. And as you can see, the output is our encrypted message, which is KL. If I do this word again, uh, the next word we had on that list was hello. You can see it encrypts it to K-H-O-O-R. If we do attack at dawn, you can see we get that output. And the final word, cat. 
translates to, or encrypts to FDW. So next I'm going to show you how this program works and how we can decrypt these messages. So to encrypt a message, all we need are these three words, my message, cipher shift and cipher out. So I'll cover my message. All we're doing here is erasing 20 bytes in a piece of memory called pad. I've covered this in other videos. It's just a scratch pad of memory. So we can actually type in pad 20 erase and pad 20 dump. So that's going to dump 20 bytes of that memory space. And we can see that we've zeroed that out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to accept 20 bytes from the keyboard. That's what accept is doing is it's telling uh, Swiftforth or your terminal that it's expecting 20 bytes from your keyboard. So you can type um, anything up to, you know, 20 characters. So right there, like even though I'm typing, it, it will just automatically stop after 20 characters. So you can hit enter and you can see that this word accept will output a length to your data stack, which in this case is 20. So if we dump that, we can see that our data space is now full. So we don't have to put in 20, we can put in 15. So if we put in like a shorter word, like any, then it would output a three to our data stack. So you don't have to always, you know, fill this up. And if you do like only put in three characters, the remaining will just be uh, zeros or the, they will turn into blank lines. They will turn, in, turn into, uh, I believe, hex 20. So that's how that one works. Next, we'll cover cipher shift, which is expecting a character. In this case, our characters that we covered are going to be, you know, 97, which represents A, 98, B, and so forth. So we're expecting these, which are characters, ASCII characters. So we can type that in. We can, uh, we'll cover this first part, which is within. And within is expecting uh, numbers within a certain range. And if you don't know what, th what it means, you can just type in locate within and it will pull up the source for this and it will show you how it works. So in this case, within is expecting a number that's your high number and a low number. And this is kind of your question mark number, I guess. And if this number is between this and this number, it will output a true flag. So for example, if we type in, uh, let's see, one, five, 10 within, this should be false. So we should get a zero because one does not fall in between five and 10. So we can pick a number that does fall in between five and 10, and that would be six. So we should get a true, which in uh, a true in fourth is always going to be a negative one. So we have a true outputted to the data stack and that's how within works. So you can see all we're doing is we're, we're getting a character, we're duplicating it, and we're checking to see if it's within. If it is within, if we get a true, a negative one, we're going to run this other code, which is going to, um, it's going to increment it by three. 
so we can actually uh, type or we can actually put this word in and you can see how it works so let me clear this out so we can type in 97 And we should get our shifted character, which in this case is 100. And if we want to emit this character, we can type in emit, and that will output a D or print out a D to the terminal. So that's how you can kind of check this, how this program works. You can just type in, you know, any character code between, like I said, 90 seven and I believe uh, it was 122 and you will see that our shift in this case our if statement did not run three plus it ran 23 minus so it subtracted because uh, 122 does not fall within this range so you can see that if you know our number is outside of this range we're going to skip this and we're going to run 23 minus. So I'll pull that buck up. That's what you see in this case over here. We have a 23 minus. So that's kind of how this is working. And next we're going to cover cipher out, which is just going to display what we have in our piece of memory and it's going to basically uh, it's going to go from my message it's going to go up here run this my message is going to output a length and our length is going to be automatically put right here so uh, in the next part I'm going to cover how to do a do loop because I don't think I've covered it in my other videos, so I'll get that part set up. A do loop is pretty simple, so what I'm going to do is put up an example word. In this case, a do, a do loop has to be used in a colon definition, so that's why you see that colon. And what I'm going to do is we're going to loop 12 times, and we're going to loop from 0 to 12. So that's kind of you have to kind of read it backwards and forth. And what we're going to do is we're going to output our loop counter uh, to the data or uh, yeah, I guess we'll do it to the data stack. So we'll do it that way. And that's pretty much all you have to do. So we'll run this so it'll make a little more sense. And you can see that my loop has outputted uh, numbers zero to 11. So with these do loops, you have to be careful of your counter because, you know, you're, you're going to suffer from these, uh, one off errors where you'll be one off sometimes because it does start from zero and it does count up, you know, 12 times from zero. And what I does is basically I is the is kind of your loop counter. So on the first pass, I is going to be zero. On the second pass, I is going to be one. And on the third pass, it's going to be two and so forth. So this is kind of your, your loop counter that comes built in and you don't really have to do anything. So another common thing that you will see is you will see this which means we're going to take that number that's on the data stack and just output it to the screen. So you will see this, this one quite often. And that's all um, period does is it's, it's similar to a emit. So all we're doing is taking that number on the data stack and just outputting it to the screen. So uh, that's pretty much how a do loop works. You have to use it in a colon definition. And after that, you can just pretty much uh, run uh, whatever you can think of.
going back to our code, you can see that our cipher out message, it goes from here. And then we run this code, we erase 20 bytes in our pad memory, and then we get 20 bytes from the keyboard. So it could be, you know, if we typed in a three letter word, our length would be three. And here, it would do the work for us. So we would have three, zero, do. But we don't have to do that because this word, you know, does the work for us. It outputs a length. So once we get the length, so for example, if we had a word called any, that's three characters, we're going to get our address and we're going to increment. So the first loop, first time we go around, this is going to be zero. And the second time we go around, it's going to be one and two. So that's how that will work after each loop and after each loop we're going to read one byte of memory that's how you read in fourth is c at if you were to do this you would read four bytes and you would probably get an error so that's why we have a c at it represents kind of a character which is one byte and then we come up here to this cipher shift, which is expecting a character. And we're going to shift it. And we covered, you know, how to do that with this statement right here. That's going to output our shifted character. And we're going to emit it to the data stack. Or rather, we will emit it or print it to the screen so we can just copy and I'm going to repaste this into a new window so all we have to type in is cipher out and it's expecting a message so we can type in hello and we can see that it spits out our encrypted message so next we're going to decrypt this and I'll show you that to decrypt, all you do is you do a little bit of a modification. You're going to, instead of go from 97 to 120, you're going to go from 100 to 123. And instead of uh, adding, you're going to subtract. So that's really the only difference whenever you decrypt. And I can copy and paste this in. And all we need to do to decrypt is show message. Just type that in. And after you hit enter, it's going to expect a message. So we'll just copy and paste that in. And we can see that we've decrypted our message and now it says hello. So pretty much we can uh, encrypt and decrypt any message that we want. So let me type that in again, cipher out, and we can type in attack at dawn. So we've got this message. If we want to decrypt, we just type in show message, hit enter, paste that in, and we can see that we've decrypted our message, attack at dawn. So that's how that works. It's a little bit of a slight modification to the above but you can see how this works another way we could do this is we could do the modulo which i haven't covered in this uh video but you could do like a modulo of 26 and that's another way to do it but i decided to do it this way so if you like this video like subscribe and let me know what you think